Welcome to MT. Hope you enjoy the video. You, you gotta have that, man. Listen to me. When, when you ask God for something, it's a very simple thing. You know how I acquired a lot of stuff was cause of a second scripture I'm gonna tell you about. See, you have not cause you ask not. You gotta start asking God for big stuff. Stop wasting God's time with all this little stuff. Lord, help me make my rent. Don't he always? You keep coming up with the rent. Lord, help me make my rent. You keep coming up with it. Has it ever occurred to you that maybe you should ask God for a mortgage? You ever thought of that? I mean, look, man. If God gonna give you the money for rent and he rewards you to according to your faith, if you quit asking for rent and ask for mortgage, you don't think God got mortgage money? But you know why you don't ask God for the mortgage? Cause you keep getting in the way. It says you have not cause you ask not. But you say, well, I don't have a job that uh, dictates I would afford a mortgage. I don't make enough money. I got bad credit. You think God don't know that? He said ask. You have not cause you ask not. So you rule yourself out of the mortgage simply because you won't ask. Just go ahead and ask God for the house. You think God don't know you need a better job? Mess around and make you team member of the year. I bet we can get a house. But see, you all in the way. You block your own blessing because you get in the way of the answer. God don't need you in the way, man. I'm telling you real. Just ask God for big stuff. Lord Jesus, help me get out of debt in seven years. What? You told God to get you out of debt in seven years because you was watching TV and they got a DVD for $39.95? Get out of debt in seven years. Why would you ask God to get you out of debt in seven years? Who you think you're talking to? Ain't this the same God that made heaven and earth in six days? Why would it take him seven years to get you out of debt? <laughs> Who you owe? <laughs> Hey man, have you ever thought about it like this? I use humor to get people to trip. He made heaven and earth in six days. You need seven years from God to get you out of debt. <laughs> You're crazy. God do big stuff. Ask God for something big. Now, here's a second. The next thing you need to do, Oprah been on TV for 30 years telling people about vision board. If you don't have a vision board, if you don't have your dreams written down, that's the other reason you don't have it. I just gave you the two main reasons why people don't have the life of their dreams. Number one, you don't ask God for it. And number two, you won't write it down. It has to be written. This is not a theory of mine. Oh, here we go again. Here come that old 2.5. Christian. I told you I knew four five script. I think this is the third one. You have to write it down. It's a principle of success. Anybody can be successful. You just have to know the principles of success. See, I know the principles of success. I could stop and go start selling tomatoes and I could go make a lot of money selling tomatoes. You know why? Because I know the principles of success. The second principle you need to know is you have to write it down. But that's the scripture. That's Habakkuk 2 to Write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it will run to it. And even though it tarry, wait for it. For surely it will come at an appointed time. I don't know but four five, but I know four five good ones though. Everything I've ever dreamed and asked God for, I done wrote it down. Everything I ever had had come from a piece of paper. And everything extra I got come from his grace. I got stuff, he gave me stuff more than on the paper. But see, you ain't got no time for that though. So here's the exercise I want all of you to do. I'm just telling you how to be successful. This is how I did it. I ain't, I ain't gonna take no course. I don't have no, fl I flunked out of school. I have no education. I got no education. You know, I did a uh, commercial for Dry, I mean for uh, Strayer, Strayer University. I'm about to sign the deal, big deal. And the lady comes in the room, black lady, she's the head of marketing. She said, Mr. Harvey, before we sign this deal, I understand that you didn't complete your degree. I said, no, I flunked out of school. She said, well, I think it would be most effective if you would go back to school as a part of this deal. We'll pay you the money we said, but we'd like for you to complete your education. It would send such a riveting message to everybody. I said, what, what, what is I'm going to school for? What is I'm going to school for? <laughs> I know that lady wanted to say, ain't it obvious? <laughs> First of all, you stupid. I said, what is I'm going to school for? She said, to complete your education. I said, but, but what is I'm going to go for? She said, what is I'm going to go for? 
that threw her in the side. Yeah, what, what is I'm going for? She said to complete your ed education and send a message to people about being successful. I looked at this lady, I said, ma'am, I can't go back to school. She said, why? I said, because I'm too old. She said, you're never too old to get education. I said, but let me ask you this way. Why would I go back to school? Because what is I'm going for, you didn't understand that. So why would I go back to school? She said, to further your education. I said, why all these people getting education? To have a better life. What course do you offer that's going to give me a better life than the one I got right now? So right now, I'm making a lot of money with these jokes, lady. And I don't see why I would stop telling these jokes to come and go to Strayer University. She said, well, if you don't go back to school, Mr. Hart, we won't be doing the deal. So I got on but my suit up. She said, where are you going? I said, you just said, if I don't go back to school, we ain't finna do the deal. Clearly, I'm not finna go back to school. She said, why are you so insistent about not going back to school? I said, you have any idea how much money I make? Why would I stop doing that to go back to school? And then she made me mad. I just said, you know what, lady? She said, there are people with multiple degrees. I said, let me, if you got one degree and it ain't working for you, why would you go get another one of them? <laughs> that little piece of hood logic was a little bit too much for her. People live wonderful lives with multiple degrees. Well, I'm not one of them. You've got to write everything down, y'all. It's an amazing thing. And let me tell you something else. Can I tell you something else? You do not have to change who you are to be successful. You have to change some things about you, but you don't have to change who you are. God created you very, very unique. I don't know if you all know this, but it's about how many people on earth? What's the number? About 7 billion? Listen to this. Do you know it's 7 billion people on earth? Ain't none of us got the same fingerprints. Who do that? Who can make 7 billion patterns and ain't none of them just alike? That's your God, your creator. That's how unique he made you. He made you so unique, you got your own set of fingerprints. It's probably been, I don't know, probably, I don't know, some billions of people done already died. I don't know. I'm just glad I ain't one of them. Billions of people have died. Guess what? Ain't none of them had the same fingerprint either. God made you uniquely you. See, I'm, I'm who I am. I don't use proper grammar. That ain't my thing. You know, when I got on talk show at NBC, you know, they sent a, uh, uh, sent this lady to work with me. What is it? The, a, a, a linguist? That's my son right there. He, I got him college educated because I ain't. <laughs> See, I got money. So everything I ain't, I hire who we is. And so they hired this linguist to work with. And she came in and set her books down in my office. I said, ma'am, who are you? She said, I'm your linguist coach. I said, oh, cool. I always wanted to make that kind of spaghetti. This is a true story. <laughs> this is not a joke. This is really a true story. I had no idea what this lady was talking about. So I'm sitting up there and she says, what is that? She said, I'm here because NBC feels if you want to be successful in daytime television, you have to speak more eloquent. So I'm here to work with your grammar. I said, oh, I ain't finna do all that. She said, excuse me? I said, I ain't finna do all that. She said, could you say that slowly for me? I said, I ain't finna do all that, that. L-A-T. I ain't finna do all that. She said, that's exactly why I'm here. I said, ma'am, what is you talking to me about this for? She said, because your grandma won't sustain a television show on daytime TV. And so I'm here to help you become more grammatically correct. Uh, I said, oh, ma'am, you wasting your time. I ain't even bother with all that. She said, excuse me? I said, I ain't really bother with all that. She said, could you say that for me slowly? Sure can. I ain't really, huh? I ain't really about all that and I ain't with it. She said, oh my God, this is worse than I thought. <laughs> now I'm enjoying myself because I'm really, really not fitting to do this class with you. I promise you I'm not. Oh, this white lady, woo! Mr. Harvey, oh, that's cute. Stomping don't really scare me. I've been shot, folk. That don't really. Mr. Harvey, whoop. <laughs> I tried to act surprised. Mr. Harvey, whoop. Tried to just give her something. She said, you have got to stop. You have got to speak more grammatically correct to be a success. I said, to be a success, I got to speak more correct. I said, let me ask you something. Which one of these sound best to you? I am broke or I'm is rich. Thank you for watching our video. Check out our other motivational videos that will help you turn your life in positive direction.